Hi, everyone. Welcome to the Goldfish Report. I'm your host, Louisa, and this is our weekly Drain the Swamp POTUS update. And we have joining us again this week, lucky for us, Jim Fetzer. Jim, welcome to Goldfish Report again, and thanks so much for being here on POTUS. Oh, Louisa, I'm delighted to join you again. I think you're doing a terrific job. These are vital issues for the public to understand. So it's wonderful you're devoting yourself to explaining what's going on. Well, thank you for joining me because I think what you know we're trying to do is understand why these things are also happening so we can put them into a context of, um, of cognition and psychology and behavior and why are people doing what they're doing. But let's, let's get into this. We only have an hour. So what the heck is going on in Charlottesville? Let's screen share what some of these stories are that we're going to be looking at and what is going on here. And I knew that you were the perfect person. I thought of you when I saw this, because unfortunately, this just has false flag written all over it. Well, it does. It does. It does. And look, notice how they, they cast it as a lose-lose for Donald Trump, mm. because uh, if he you know, condemns the, the so-called uh, white nationalists, then presumably he's attacking some strong supporters of his America First program. And if he doesn't, they can pillory him for condoning it. I thought he was very artful, actually, in condemning both sides here, which was actually exactly the right stance to take. But because they had a preconceived plan here for how they were going to spin this to demonize Trump, they have attacked him for not being more forceful in following what they believed would be his initial reaction. Well, let's let's um, take a look at how this whole event came to be. This just seemed like it popped up out of nowhere, Jim. Did it pop up out of nowhere? What what do, what do we pretty, know? pretty much? And let me just say something too. Yeah. We had a, a very odd uh, automobile attack in mm-hmm. New York City, uh, oh six months or so ago, mm-hmm. and I had the benefit of a brilliant guy who's uh, been a police officer for twenty five years, a general detective, fifteen of those who did a slow motion study of that event. And it turned out to be choreographed. They had stunt actors who got up after being run over. Turns out the vehicle was actually there at the corner under a tarp from the night before. So it seems to me we have a precursor here of what's going on in Charlottesville. Though it may very well be that this 32 year old woman is in fact dead and that others are injured, there are reasons to believe that even the crash itself had some uh, choreographed aspects. Well, it looked like a stunt car from the movies, except it, you know, and and it, it, the way it moved in and moved back so easily and effortlessly, and the windows were all blackened, and it just seemed like a stunt car to me. I, I don't well, know. the way back, that was really remarkable. When I watched yeah. the video, I couldn't believe it. I mean, just straight <laughs> back. I mean, that's not easy to do. And if you're, you know, uh, the least bit disturbed, it's it's going to be very difficult to pull off. That suggests exactly. maybe the guy who was arrested wasn't the guy driving the car. This is so, this just, you know, smells really bad. Let's take a look at why it also smells bad, because we also have this, um, we have this ad here. You want to explain what this is, where you found this? Sure, sure. Well, it, it, it turned up online at a Craigslist ad for actors and photographers in Charlottesville. I mean, here you have one of these crisis actor firms, Crowds on Demand, mm-hmm. a PR outfit based in L.A., and they were looking for enthusiastic actors and photographers in the Charlotte, North Carolina a- area. Now, that's, uh, that's actually in Charlotte as opposed to Charlottesville. Right, but that's so on in, purpose, though, right? I mean, it's so, yeah. It may very well be, right. yeah. The, the trouble is, this is going on all the time. For example, in relation to San Bernardino, mm-hmm. we discovered a Craigslist ad for actors at San Bernardino. The, they were going to be have good pay, transportation, food, some speaking roles. The call date was December 1st, going live on the 2nd, which is why there were so many wandering around aimlessly, not knowing what they were doing, because literally they didn't know what they were doing. I found a highly qualified EMT, I mean, a guy with extraordinary qualifications. When we went through the, the medical activities on, at both Sandy Hook on the 14th of December 
and in San Bernardino, and he, he made one point after another how they weren't following standard protocols, that this was all clearly faked and staged. I had it online, the real deal, staging attacks from Sandy Hook to San Bernardino, but the last time I checked, it's one that YouTube had taken down. Mm. There's just too much truth out there, and they're doing everything they can to ensure that the public does not become aware of what's going on. But, Jim, people know. I mean, there's got to be millions of people who know about false flags, and a lot of it's thanks to you and your work. I mean, but a lot of people are waking up. Why is this that they – the problem is, we were talking about this before we started recording, is why people look at this ad and you see one thing and the people who respond to it see something very different. And there's just a lack of – critical thinking and a lack of awareness like you were saying because you see this and you just say something's going to happen something's going on someone looks at this and says oh a chance to make money free food free gas you know what the heck they have no idea what the consequences of their actions are going to be they have no idea what they're getting into do you think that they sign do you think that they sign non-disclosure agreements what do you think oh i expect they do do you know that those who were involved in the demolition of Sandy Hook Elementary School had to sign lifetime gag orders that they couldn't discuss what they saw or did not see, which <laughs> would have on. included no blood on the floor, no pock marks in the walls from bullets that were never fired. But Jim, we don't do this in crime scenes normally. You never put those gag orders on lifetime real. gag orders <laughs> on real crime scenes. And and the the <laughs> the, the clerk of Newtown entered into secret oh, agreements with the legislature before the event that she not be required to issue death certificates on children because she knew that issuing a false de death certificate is a crime. She didn't want to commit a crime. So she arranged with them that she not be obligated to issue them in anticipation of the Sandy Hook event. Well, where to, but but certainly if there's deceased people involved, there's going to be death certificates. You would expect, but well, didn't, they, didn't, they, didn't Louisa? Involve, they went out of their way to ensure they not be available to the public. Oh, they, it's not available to the public. I right, see. right. And, and the, the one we obtained was from Kelly Watt, who's a very smart gal, who had over 100 hours of conversation with Lenny Posner, who was the purported father of right. Noah, right. the most prominent of the Sandy Hook kids, because Noah not only died in Newtown on 14 December of 2012, but died again on 16 December 2012. 14 in, in Pakistan, uh, and when Kelly told him that she didn't believe he had a kid, didn't believe he died and all that, he, I think, inadvisedly sent her a, a death certificate for Noah, and it turned about a fabrication with the bottom half of a real death certificate, the top half of a fake, right. didn't have a file number, had the wrong estimated time of death as 11 a.m. when the shooting took place, purportedly between 9.30 and 9.35, needless to add. If his son had actually died at Sandy Hook, he would have had a real death certificate, not a fake one. This is treason, isn't it? This is treason. You don't have these things. These people who are in the know, who know how these things normally operate, like Wolfgang Halbert also, you know, knows that there were certain protocols that were established for this, for this purpose that were not followed, like you have pointed out as well. And you've also pointed out that there was a stand-down order now. Is that... Was that yeah, we'll get, we'll get, to, we'll that. get to that. What's okay. interesting here is that yes. this fellow, Richard Spencer who seems to have been involved in organizing the rally, may very well be a plant. We'll get to that. The Daily Stormer was involved in the planning of the event as a protest to taking down a statue of Robert E. Lee, who, of course, was not only a great general, but in my opinion, a great American. I mean, he was standing up for what he believed. This business of taking down all of these monuments to major participants in the Civil War is, to me, a form of desecration. They, they stood up for what they believed. They've done the same thing in New Orleans, taking down a dozen or more monuments. I think it's political correctness gone amok. I mean, there's no reason to do this. It's a, it's a needless provocation. And that appears to be the point. They're taking them down in order to provoke a response right. to which they can then respond as they 
prefer to twist the situation to their political benefit. Well, do you think there's any truth to the report that they were trying to impose martial law? That this was a a no no like, let us let us get to that because that's okay. interesting. That's been that's been censored. I want to talk about why that it's important that that speculations of that order not be censored. If okay. you go down to the next slide, you'll okay. see here this is a summation. Yeah. Uh, about what happened, that after a challenge by the ACLU, a federal judge ruled uh, to, to take the permit for Lee Park uh, uh, was a civil rights violation, so it was restored. They arrived, there were about four to 5,000 people gathered. The event was scheduled to begin at noon. But around 11.30, cops began attacking the crowd and shooting tear gas. Uh, they began bullhorning. It was an illegal assembly, when clearly it was not. People were forced out of the park. Those who tried to say were attacked. There were there there were a few from this uh, uh, organization, but the cops cops herded the people in their direction so people would be attacked and pepper sprayed. They, they were uh, people were attempting to reorganize in various locations. They were visited by cops. People were being split up, and someone crashed a car. This this is uh, in, indicative of uh, uh, another story we have here of this, the police uh, having been ordered to stand down for maintaining an uh, organized, a peaceable assembly. Okay, now, let's let me it, just get to that. You keep talking, I'm gonna try and pull that up. I'm gonna pull that one up. Well, yeah, we, we could just scroll through the sequence because the next one is interesting okay. too. That's suggesting that this Spencer isn't bona fide, that he actually was a plant. Okay. And thereby, you know, an, uh, implicitly an agent, a covert agent provocateur. Yeah. Yeah, there it is. Texas. He's from elite prep school in Dallas. He went to Duke. He, his uh, cry of ha hail Trump, you see, is a deliberate a effort to demonize Trump by drawing parallels to Hitler. And here you have him in a friendly photo with Laura Bush. I mean, give us a break. But, but, Jen, there's got to be an agenda behind this. People aren't suddenly – that the problem is that this is social engineering. That's oh, the bottom completely. line. Absolutely. And, and to fulfill an agenda that's going to impose more restrictions on our liberties, on our rights, which I don't really think we, we have anyway because we're all dead, according to our birth certificates, we're vessels or we're deceased. But that's another conversation. Um, so, uh, yes, there's, there's the censorship, and this is... Well, well, the fact is, the fact is, Louisa, this seems to be an extension of the efforts that the Trump campaign, especially in collusion with George Soros, was undertaking against Donald Trump as a, as a candidate. Right. They were infiltrating his rallies, attempting sabotage. We had the Project Veritas videos as revelations. So what we have here is a massive double standard but that's all because it's deliberately contrived to undermine the, the uh, authority of Donald Trump as a democratically elected president of the United States. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, you know, it, it's uh, not a coincidence that this seemed to be like, uh, you know, regard, um, relative to university over there. And, you know, what happened, they, when um, M Milo, uh, I can't pronounce his last name because I really don't have it at the top of my head, but was giving a, a speech over at, um, at uh, what was it, uh, Columbia? No, Berkeley, UC Berkeley. And then that big riot, um, that big riot came and um, they had these men in black, like these people in black uh, the groups, and they were like black groups, they called them, and they were provocateurs who went in and incited the violence. So people who were there were absolutely stunned and amazed that this was happening because they don't realize they are being, they are being um, led in, they're, you know, like sheep in a slaughterhouse. I mean, they don't know yeah. what they're really participating in. And if, yeah. they, if they watched what happened in, in, um, uh, with Oshetti Sokoen, if they did they not see that video from November 20th with the water cannons and below freezing temperatures? Did they not see those, you know, reports about the, uh, the uh, rubber bullets being shot at peaceful, prayerful protesters? Of course, if you're going to, I just want the viewers to know, and anybody who sees this, if you're planning on participating in any of these things, you know, this is your wake-up call, right, Jim? Yes, 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 yes. Scroll down a few more, and we've, we've got other stories related here that are important for us to discuss further. Oh yeah. God, yeah, I keep going. Here we go. Here, here, it is. Here, here, 
that the police were ordered to stand down, yet that earlier report, which did come from the Daily Stormer, had them actually attacking the participants in the rally. Uh, so, you know... Which it, one it, is it? <laughs> right. But the point is, either way, it's right. wrongful conduct on the part of the police right. and indicates that this was a setup. This is a story worth uh, reviewing. Charlottesville, the events that unflo- unfolded uh, this Saturday were tragic, hateful, mm. insidious, and even deadly. Saturday will go down in history as the day America's hate reared its ugly face and prove to the world that this country is being divided to be conquered. Adding fuel to the fire of hatred and violence were politicians who told police not to intervene and allowed the unchecked carnage to unfold before their eyes. The stand-down order was confirmed by the ACLU, who quoted a police say source saying, will not intervene until given a command to do so, a command that never came. Right. You know, I thought when I saw some of the initial images, I didn't see police. Yeah, they should have been distributed in the crowd for crowd control. Exactly. I mean, that, that didn't happen in Dallas, for example, with JFK. The 110th Military Intelligence Unit was ordered to stand down over the adamant opposition of its commanding officer, which should have been distributed throughout the city to keep the crowd uh, out of the street. In fact, they spilled out 8, 10, 12. We have one photograph of a bus on Main Street. In the, you could have, had, uh, right beside the presidential limousine, where an assassin with a handgun could have taken uh-huh. out the president of the United States. Right. This was all part of the setting him up. This, we right. have more than 15 indications of Secret Service setting him up. Now here's Alex Jones speculating that the, the riots were staged to bring in martial law and ban conservative rallies. And while, uh, uh, you know, there are going to be efforts to suppress this, we're going to go forward with all, everything that's going on now using Google and other search engines right. to take down stories. The reason it's important, even if this is merely a speculation, and I'll grant it appears to be highly speculative, right. uh, uh, that's the starting point for scientific inquiry. It all begins in speculation. So if you don't allow speculation, you cut off critical thinking from the beginning because the key element is getting alternative hypotheses out there to kick around to investigate, to sort out the evidence to determine which are true and which are false. Okay, that's what we're trying to do here on POTUS Report is to look at the data, look at the evidence and sort through and what does it mean. And sometimes, you know, it doesn't mean that this is what we believe personally. It just means that we're looking at the data and according to the way we're uh, educated and trained in our experiences, this is this is what the possible interpretation is. Is that what you're saying, Jim? Yes, yes, yes. And there, uh, it, 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 when you take an event like this that is uh, politically significant, you want to look at the context, look at the location, look at the locale, look at the players. Uh, this is uh, Charlottesville, Virginia. I actually taught at the University of Virginia twice as a visiting associate professor in 77, 78, as a visiting full professor in 1985. Uh, I know the community. Uh, it, it's, uh, it has changed somewhat in its complexion to become very supportive of uh, liberal Democrats. Uh, after all, Hillary's uh, uh, vice presidential candidate came from Virginia. Her one-time uh, campaign manager, Terry McAuliffe, came from Virginia. He's been tied into a whole lot of corruption. Get this. Now, here's other data about those who were involved there. Mayor Mike Siner came to Charlottesville around 2005. He comes from a New York family. He's a longtime Democratic Party activist and voting rights lawyer. He's a protege of Virginia Senator Mark Warner, who is from California and and the Democratic uh, governor. Uh, the vice mayor, Wes Bellamy, came to Charlottesville from Atlanta in 2009. He's a full-time professional black activist and agitator. Mm. Uh, 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 Kristen Zekos came from Hungary to Charlottesville in 1994. She's a community organizer and agitator and member of the board of directors for the local NAACP. Mm. She was the proponent of the monument removal measure. Bob Fenwick is from St. Louis, Missouri, came to Charlottesville in 1976 where he married a local UVA law grad. In comparison to his colleagues on the council, he's a Charlottesville old-timer. 
But the point is, there are a lot of people there mm -hmm. who would be very supportive of an action that would be cast a very unfavorable light on the Trump administration because they're uh, uh, longtime supporters of Hillary Clinton, George Soros, the globalist agenda that actually would ultimately deprive us as our rights as citizens, part of which, of course, is the gun control effort that was, uh, you know, given a, such a, a major boost by the events of Sandy Hook, mm -hmm. even though they were completely contrived, even though we right. have proof it was a FEMA drill, including even the manual, where Barack right. Obama, right. <laughs> Louisa, Made a laid statement. the foundation for all of these events yes. by nullifying the Smith-Mutt Act of 1948, which precluded the use of the same techniques of disinformation and propaganda within the United States as were being used without in the NDAA, the National Defense Appropriation Act of 2013, signed in time for Sandy Hook, the Boston bombing, San Bernardino, and a host of these others, including even this event. To well, the extent, wait. I'm sorry, Jim. I'm sorry. I don't mean to interrupt you. Go ahead. Finish that thought. <laughs> no, that's okay. I no, mean, they, they, the they have made it legal. They have made yes. it legal. Yes. Yes. to perform these phony fraudulent events without yes. fear of uh, criminal indictment yes. uh, under, this is a Barack Obama thing. It, but and didn't it, the Patriot Act open the door for this? Wasn't this in the Patriot Act where they were allowed to use propaganda? It was, I, I thought that was in the Patriot Act or maybe it was another subsequent. Oh, I don't believe it actually was. Uh, okay. The smith Mont was okay. actually nullified until 2012 when Obama okay. signed the NDAA for 2013. But the Patriot Act laid the groundwork for so many uh, acts of malfeasance, you know, right, and right. it's tragic uh, because... The, no one in the Senate, to my knowledge, even read the Patriot Act. It was it was brought off the shelf. It had been prepared in a bag and then rushed mm -hmm. through. In fact, when an attempt was was made to conduct hearings mm -hmm. uh, by prominent members of the Judiciary Committee, for example, they were sent anthrax. This is when those anthrax occurs took place right. Right. to ensure that there would be no hearing. Before we move on, so in speculation, since that's what we're doing, we're speculating, what, I mean, it, it, what's the probability then? Is there a probability that, that this, that Alex Jones could be correct in that there was some agenda to create martial law? Because I have to tell you, with all these other false flags, they did not get martial law. They might have done it in the, like, Boston, like, I think they went under martial law for, like, a short period of time, but it didn't remain. So it doesn't seem to, I, I think these are, they're like firecrackers that fuzz out. They just don't give them the bang, I think, ultimately, mm -hmm. that they're looking for. I don't think they're really creating um, a nuisance, yes, but I don't think... Well, well bear in mind, bear in mind Louisa, agenda. Alex has been out this a long time. And right. while he certainly has his shortcomings, for example, he, he minimizes uh, the role of Israel in a whole lot of nefarious activities, including 9-11. Nevertheless, yes. he has brought a great deal of awareness of false flag attacks to the American people. And he's looking at this within a, a broad pattern of events, uh, uh, which could very reasonably be interpreted as attempts to lay a groundwork or to promote the imposition of martial law. Uh, so I can't dismiss what he's saying here uh, it, casually. It, it has to be taken seriously, but not to the point of acceptance. This is the, the stage of speculation and scientific inquiries are four stages. Yes. Speculation, uh, uh, it, 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 investigation, elaborating the evidence, adaptation of the hypotheses to the evidence as we see which have the higher likelihood, which are better supported by the evidence, and fourth, uh, ex explanation. When the evidence tends to settle down and point in the same direction, you're entitled to accept the best supported hypotheses, uh, hypothesis among the alternatives as true, but in the tentative and fallible fashion of science, meaning even though it's best supported, it could still turn out to be false. And where as more evidence comes in, you may have to adjust your reasoning Reject hypotheses you previously accepted, accept hypotheses you previously rejected, and leave others in suspense. 
Right. So that's the process we're going through here. Okay. And, and you know, here he's just talking about a, a, an early stage, but for which I think many would argue but there is some evidence to support. Okay. Especially banning conservative, um, you know, gatherings and they're banning conservative reporting on Facebook. I mean, on Google, probably Facebook, but on Google, on YouTube. And that's really going to bring us into the next story because this is all part of really a crackdown to really get a much more, um, you know, uh, greater control over the content, over the information flow. of That's information. absolutely right. Now, most of the audience may have never heard William Casey's remarks to the staff at, at, at the CIA when Reagan appointed him its director after having managed his campaign and negotiated with the Iranians to not release the hostages so that Jimmy Carter wouldn't be able to win the election where Casey told the assembled staff that our disinformation campaign will be a success when everything the American people believe is false. The fact is the internet has undermined that by creating an alternative media that today has more credibility than the mainstream, and therefore uh, the powers that be are responding by trying to find ways to rein in the alternative media well, right. Google, Mozilla, Facebook, Amazon.com are all participating in a massive effort to suppress information they don't want to be heard or watched by the American people. Did you see that report, that Drudge, the Drudge report actually superseded um, the uh, ratings of CNN and the other mainstream it, media? It, it's in our story set, Louise. It's yeah. in oh, our story that's where set. We saw it. <laughs> of course, we saw it. Here. Isn't that fascinating? This is, this, Isn't this is that where fascinating? We're be talking about this. So, very good. And of course, Mozilla. And I'll tell you, Mozilla always crashes on me. I'm so frustrated with, with fire. I think it's a. Uh, Funny. They're always in yeah, we're talking about Firefox. I think yeah. it's the least desirable of the browsers. I find Chrome and Safari, I use all three to be more reliable than Firefox. Oh, yeah, unfortunately. But Firefox, I think, was a little bit better with keeping, um, you know, in terms of the, you know, tracking your history and things like that. And not like DuckDuckGo, though. That's another one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, Louisa, think about this. That may be because, as I see it, actually, Firefox looks to me like a military intel op. So they want to track your history. So keeping yeah. an accurate history of you is yeah. just the compiling part of their database that's, that's particularized, individualized to each of its users. Well, I just do research on policy, so that's all they're going to see on me. I, you know, nothing to hide. Well, if you back up just a hair, we'll oh, see okay. part of the story about how right. what's going on with Mozilla. Yeah. yeah. Information just, a, just a tad further. Okay. Sorry about yeah. that. Said it's investing in people, programs, and projects in a new initiative to disrupt misinformation online, calling for a Mozilla Information Trust initiative. But how how are they a position to arbitrate between the true and the false? Absolutely. What is uh, misinformation? The, What's the right? Criteria? Right. The what whole creation of the fact checkers like Snopes.org yeah. is is to create a second layer yeah. of disinformation. By using one intel source to 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 reinforce another, uh, we we have found multiple times that Snopes had bad stories about Sandy Hook, about the Boston bombing, about the moon landing. You go on and on. Snopes is a government op, and the other fact checkers they they cite raises a question: Who's fact checking the fact checkers? Absolutely. No one should be telling you what to believe or declaring something to be false, because I'll tell you the way they're operating. They're overwhelmingly wrong, yeah. because they're operating on the basis of a predetermined agenda, politically right. driven to suppress information that's inconvenient to the government and the intelligence agencies of the United States. Well, Jim, and this is right up your alley, because what they're doing is what some of the research I've been finding is that they've created these news stories, these fake news stories, are, are, um, they're, they're generated by um, algorithmic um, uh, patterns 
of uh, points that like clusteries that have certain points of interest, points of uh, emotional impact, points of, um, you know, I, this is a very condition. It's all about conditioning people. It's a uh, keeping them in this, you know, uh, low state of vibration, always in fear all the time. But, but, but these algorithms are what's creating these new stories. And, and if, and if your story doesn't fit these algorithms, this is what happens. This is where, this is how they're being the arbiter of truth is through these algorithms. This is just a, a speculative. This right, is right. The, ne the very next story, actually, yeah. Louisa, it's, is, it's, it's right on the button. Here we go. And this is uh, from Global, Global Research, which is a, a very responsible website side. It, in the, the three months since internet monopoly, Google announced plans to keep users from accessing fake news. Yeah. The global traffic rankings of a broad range of left-wing progressive anti-war and democratic rights organizations have fallen significantly. This is interesting is because they're complaining that they're restricting access to the left-wing. The overwhelming majority of these efforts on, are on the other side. Right. And so, you know, it's fascinating, uh, raising possibly, you know, the question of, of, of the foundation for this story. In other words, we have to sort out what's going on here between the, those who are, which are directed at the, the uh, uh, what, uh, alternative news sites and I can tell you from personal experience, they've gone after hundreds of Sandy Hook videos. Sandy Hook whole channels have been taken down. They're making a massive effort to suppress it. Miraculously, it hasn't quite worked. And the reason to think it's backfiring, because get this, Louise, it's a fascinating story. CBS ran a, a, a rebroadcast of a story about on 60 Minutes, just a, uh, uh, 10 days ago or so on Sunday, and they opened up a thread for discussion. And to my utter astonishment, a whole lot of uh, objections to their program based upon what we have discovered about Sandy Hook were allowed to stand. And it's just sensational. Even Discus, which maintains the discussion thread, put out a blast that had to go to an enormous audience that this was. Uh, one of the most interesting discussions uh, uh, about CBS, which, which is just amazing because if you read through that thread, you'll get proof after proof after proof that the school had been closed by 2008, that there were no students there, that was a FEMA drill, that we even uh, have the manual and more. What's, there, asto what's astonishing is that yeah. they're, they're leaving it up, Louisa. But it's, you know, there was an official statement from... Obama that this was a drill it was an official statement by the government that said it was a drill quietly yeah, case, and it wasn't well, put on mainstream media did you notice well that? one of our one of our contributors to nobody died at Sandy Hook where the first edition I released for free as a PDS when Amazon banned the book it had gone on sale on October 22nd 2015 and sold nearly 500 copies before it was banned on 19 November uh, Paul Preston, who's a superintendent of schools from the Los Angeles area, was so troubled by what he saw being broadcast from Newtown that he reached out to his contacts in the Obama Department of Education, all of whom confirmed to him that it had been a drill, that no children had died, and that it was done to promote gun control. Absolutely. It's, it's right there in the Absolutely. book. Absolutely. And, and any of your audience can download it for themselves and read it, study the evidence for themselves. It's really well, remarkable. Jim, there was um, reported, um, maybe you know more about this than I do, um, that there was this you know, huge lawsuit against the mainstream media for portraying this as a real news event. Well, I know. I know and William that, Shanley, who filed the lawsuit, yeah. which was dismissed, Initially on formal technical grounds, I believe it's now been dismissed again uh, that the court's refusing to hear it. But yes, he, he was complaining that the mainstream media is perpetrating the hoax. Actually, I've published an article on my blog, Amazon.com and YouTube, accessories after the fact to fraud and theft by deception. Right. Because, you know, a staggering number of Americans, sympathetic but gullible, made uh, contributions, donations, 
from 28 to 130 million dollars that were divided by the 28 supposed families. That's more than a million bucks per family. When it was an elaborate stunt, I mean, it was a FEMA drill. You can find the manual for yourself. So I am trying to find an access route to get to bring a lawsuit against Amazon.com and YouTube for uh, 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 the criminal action of becoming accessories. That that was roughly the thrust of of Shamley's approach, but he somehow didn't manage to have it fashioned to satisfy the court, which in Connecticut, I think, is probably a a practical impossibility under any circumstances anyway. Well, Jim, I want to keep moving with some of the stories here. And I I mean, not not like 9-11. I mean, you know, we can't even get justice on 9-11 when you have architects and engineers who say, John Lear saying, John Lear saying it's impossible aerodynamically to fly those planes into those buildings that way. I know. John Lear's a wonderful guy. I'm a huge fan. I mean, you can you find know, his app. You can find his affidavit, by the way, at nine one one scholars dot ning n i n g dot com, which is the forum discussion group for scholars for nine eleven truth. Just go there and do a search on John Lear affidavit, and it will turn up. Nine eleven scholars dot ning. Yeah, nine one one scholars dot ning dot dot com. Dot com. Yeah, it's on the air. That's a discussion yeah. forum for 911scholars.org. For right. I had, I, had, I had come across that. I had published it on our Goldfish Report Facebook news site. So yeah. the whole news site is just a repository of stories. Um, they are there for people to do research, to right. do their own research. You know, keep on going with your research. You know, you have to become informed in this world or you're going to be fleeced, completely fleeced. Right, right. And I know if we go to the next couple stories, we can move forward because yes. there's so much important. I mean, yes. this is just re- observing the obvious. There have been so many instances right. of anti-Trump censorship, it's impossible to keep count. It happens again and again and again. And if you go to the next story, yeah. I think you'll see, you know, this is about YouTube purging the alternative media as the deep state marches toward World War III. Uh, they're cracking down on pro-Trump pages. Pro-Trump personality, Diamond and Silk, two very articulate black women, were hit with a demonetization purge. Uh, If you continue, you'll find it's fascinating that, as you were mentioning before, Drudge actually has become the number one news source as a total alternative media source, beating Google News, the Huffington Post, the Washington Post, the New York Times, CNN, I mean, this is a fascinating development, not because we would agree with everything Drudge publishes, but because the alternative media is overtaking the mainstream very significant development. What does this say behaviorally, though, about people, Jim? What is this saying? I mean, something. there's a shift here. There's some kind of shift. What's happening to people? I think that the, the, the endless drumming about Russian hacking, which was false from the beginning. We know now that John Podesta and Robbie Mook made up the Russian hacking meme within 24 hours of Hillary's concession speech, Mm -hmm. as two investigative journalists published in the new book, Shattered. Mm -hmm. But this endless drumming on about a story that had no foundation for eight or more months now, I think has convinced most Americans that the mainstream media is totally unreliable. Yeah. ABC, NBC, C- CBS, CNN is CIA 24 hours a day. MSNBC is just a CIA light or CNN light. They're marketing the same product, just giving it this uh, lighter touch using chills such as Rachel Maddow and Lawrence O'Donnell, <laughs> two of the worst, where Chris Matthews, I believe, still believes Lee Harvey Oswald shot JFK. I mean, it's pathetic that how they are attempting to brainwash the American public. 
It is. And you know what, though? But there's some shift and change going on because these tactics have worked in the past. But the, the, the thing that I think they're noticing, why I think they're ramping up, and I think it's a ramping up with these, um, these planned false flags and provocateurs, and it seems to be getting more violent, is because it's not working anymore. People are waking up. They are seeing through the um, the false, the fake media, and thank Donald Trump right. for for bringing fake media into the public awareness. I mean, when you have a president yeah. talking about it, then yeah. it's not it's not conspiracy theory anymore, is it, Jim? Right, right, absolutely right. Trump's been brilliant about uh, managing the media. He, in certain respects, he's a genius, and this is among his greatest yeah. strengths. Yeah. He's been promoting the alternative media, which is why the establishment is having to resort to these techniques of suppression through Google, Amazon.com, right. and, and, and YouTube. So the globalists should start being worried because what they're doing is their models are not working anymore. And what oh, they they're worried. There's no doubt yes. about it. This wouldn't be taking place otherwise, for sure. I, absolutely, absolutely. And and um, you know the Bloomberg um, Bloomberg Consumer. Uh, Comfort Index uh, last week showed, you know, Americans registered their strongest optimism in 16 years based on um, upbeat views of the state of the economy, their personal finances, and buying atmosphere. Now, you know, Jim, this is only as good as the sample of from the demographic, because I don't know well, what, let me tell what you sample the difference. demographic they're taking here, but... You know, let's let's talk about this. What is this? Let me tell you the difference the internet has made. It, it took us up to fifty years to put together all the pieces of the puzzle about the assassination of JFK. With nine eleven, perhaps ten. With Sandy Hook, less. With with the Boston bombing, it was solved the same day. So what we're seeing is increasing awareness on the part of the alternative media, more sophisticated analysis, as more and more. Americans and foreigners, too, are becoming involved in this uh, project of cracking the crime, you know, of exposing the false flag events where they're doing a wonderful job. Here you see in this next story how Amazon is being paid off handsomely by the CIA. They have a $600 million deal, and they're completely compromised. It's a pathetic and it seems to me there's a necessity that the government should enter in and do tr uh, trust busting. Amazon has become a monster, driving ordinary retailers out of business, having a very adverse effect on the community in general, all to enrich itself. It's quite outrageous, and their ties with the intelligence agencies are only becoming stronger and stronger. It's very parasitic, though, to our society, isn't it? Of course, absolutely. It's, it's very parasitic. And, and, and all this is being paid for by taxpayer dollars, Louisa. In other words, they're using taxpayer money to subvert democracy and freedom right here in the USA. Did everybody hear that? <laughs> Do you need to repeat that, Jim? Maybe you should say it again. <laughs> they are using taxpayers' dollars to subvert freedom and democracy right here in the USA. What can people do? Oh, well, they really can become aware. aware. Right. They can become aware, share their awa awareness, write letters to the editor, complain to their representatives, their senators, uh, become as active as they can in getting the word out. Uh, I have great confidence in the American people if they're told the truth that they'll take appropriate actions. There are right. several things that have to be done. Number one, getting rid of electronic voting machines, which are used to steal elections. This last was rigged for Hillary. It didn't happen because there were so many communities, so many counties where they'd suffered massive casualties in the Middle East. They wanted to, they voted for the candidate they thought less likely to engender more, mm -hmm. especially in the states of uh, uh, Pennsylvania, Ohio, Michigan, and Wisconsin, which swung the election. We have to get rid of gerrymandered districts. Uh, we have yes. to yes. Uh, get rid of private money and political campaigns. And, and believe it or not, Louisa, we have to bring back the draft. Uh, the American people, once Nixon uh, uh, abandoned the draft, mm. decided they didn't have to worry about decisions of war and peace because it wouldn't involve their own families, sons and daughters. Right. And that's had a tremendously deleterious effect about 
public involvement in these most serious decisions made by the executive absolutely branch of the government absolutely here we are again you're yeah, absolutely, we can, you're absolutely we can. right though jim because um if it wasn't for the fact that these are issues that are not coming across their kitchen table because it's not affecting and impacting their own life but when That's right but when everyone was drafted into the military and that was a national conversation it was a it was affecting if not you at least five people you knew. I mean, it was everybody was talking about it. It became some something all of a sudden people needed to really get involved in. And, and I think it's a very good point. I've never heard that before. So I give you credit. That is amazing. That's a very good point. But don't we want to end war? I mean, Donald Trump. Of course, you know, of course, of course. No one but the way wants peace greater than him. But what are we doing? What's going on with North Korea? Louisa, the United States is the greatest initiator of wars. We are by far the greatest aggressor nation in the world, by far. This business with North Korea is bizarre. You can go through these slides in, in fairly short order because it's all exaggerated. It has nothing to do with reality. Right. Uh, the, the North Koreans don't have intercontinental ballistic missiles. It looks as though, and this wouldn't surprise me, it may be that we have some interest in the mineral wealth of Korea. We did in Afghanistan. Afghanistan has the largest supply of lithium in the world outside of Bolivia, where lithium is used in the triggers for nuclear weapons, for components and computers, and for electric car batteries. Right. We are have no good reason to be in Afghanistan other than exploiting its mineral resources and ex appropriating its poppy fields. The Taliban had all but distinguished poppy growth there since our invasion, it's come back with a vengeance. Many officers have returned from the Middle East complaining their role was to protect the poppy fields from destruction so the CIA could harvest, where the CIA since Southeast Asia involvement hooked them on heroin, has become the biggest uh, uh, drug dealing uh, operation in the world. Jim, in our last 20 minutes, let's keep going here. What, I mean, as soon as you started to say, you know, uh, you know, we'll be met with uh, fire and fury like the world has never seen. Oh my God, was this not uh, George Bush all over again with the, you know, fake, uh, you know, weapons of mass destruction argument? That well, it was very, you know, very inappropriate. Was, if you keep going, echo, I, I'll echo. elaborate more about yeah, this and yeah. why the absurdity of it yeah, all. Yeah. Because, yeah, pass. Yeah, continue, continue. Yeah, yeah, right, right. yeah you can keep going. Okay. <laughs> here we go. Here, here's a good article. Despite the corporate media's claim, North Korea still can't strike the continental United States. Uh, frankly, if you go to one more story, I'll elaborate on it there because I was interviewed yeah. on uh, Press TV, which is the Iranian international news service, and explained this was all completely contrived, that even if they had a missile that could reach the United States, it wouldn't have the chance to do that. We've invested trillions of dollars. We have satellite-mounted laser weapons that can take out any of these missiles in flight, we actually blew up several of their missiles on the launching pad to embarrass North Korea. And the fact is none of these missiles could carry a standard nuclear payload. Right. So they claim, and this is total fantasy, that they've discovered how to shrink down uh, the, the nuclear weapon small enough that it can be carried by the device. This is just total nonsense complete rubbish i mean jim so they the, can't get a firecracker off the ground over in north korea and there there's fake news stories saying that north korea's got an emp satellite up there ready to hit usa it's just ridiculous yeah. they're just trying to manipulate the public by instilling fear think about all the stories we were told about iraq pursuing weapons of mass destruction it was all rubbish then, and it's all rubbish now. Absolutely. I, why? But there's a reason. So they're going to go and exploit. You know, it also happened to be, not a coincidence, that these countries that we continuously invade um, are countries that are not part of the central banking system. Yeah, yeah, sure. That's absolutely right. I mean, that was the true of the whole Middle East. The Rothschild Empire wanted to develop banks in Muslim countries because in Islam, usury, right. making money off of money, or in other words, interest, is eschewed. 
So they had to get a new foothold. When I first heard about the rebel effort in Libya, that their first action had been to found a new central bank, I knew things were completely other than we were being told. Gaddafi not only was not abusing his people, he was benefiting them. He was sharing the wealth of Libya with the Libyan people. Right. National health care, national public education, national warehouses stocked with food. If you had a medical problem that couldn't be dealt with in Libya, he would fly you and a friend or relative anywhere in the world uh, at all expense paid by the government. He also was introducing the gold dinar, which would have rapidly become the currency of all of Africa and the Great Waterworks Project that would have turned North Africa into a veritable oasis. We know now from WikiLeaks emails that the Rothschilds were upset about the gold dinar and the French were upset about his growing influence, yeah. where Hillary was instrumental in bringing about a NATO attack on what may have been the most humane society on the face of Earth. Right. Devastating slaughter, rape, brutality, and now, of course, this once really wonderful society has been turned into nothing but chaos, where one of her objectives appears to have been to take Gaddafi's stockpile of weapons and transfer them to the rebels in Syria. Uh, I can't begin to say the terrible situation we'd be in had Hillary become president. We'd already be at war in Syria, uh, meaning a full-scale war, probably even World War III with Russia because she was unrelenting. This is why the counties that voted for the candidate they thought was less likely to bring us another war right. Right. exercise wisdom on behalf of the people of the United States. Finally. <laughs> I know. Finally. And, and, of course, <laughs> the powers that be, the elites on both sides, the military-industrial complex, is trying to undermine it to undo it. That's why we have all these attacks on Trump. I know. Well, let's keep going here. Let's see if we could, what we could get through here. Uh, well, what this means, this Manafort yeah, thing yes. means that Mueller's investigation of Trump for Russia hacking has fallen apart. Right. We had the veteran intelligence professionals for sanity confirm that there wasn't any hack, that the files were downloaded from the server because the rate at which they were downloaded was much too fast to have been a distant hack. You have some of the best intel experts in the country confirming that. So this Manafort is an attempt to make it look like they're making progress when essentially it means they've abandoned the Russian hacking meme, which has been thoroughly discredited. Thank you, God. We are so tired of this. I mean, did you ever put on, I mean, I would go and watch Weather Channel and in the, pro, you know, it's actually right next to CNN or Fox News. Uh, it's right next to CNN on my, my remote control. And you know, so occasionally I would just, just for fun, I mean, really for entertainment, I would just go to CNN and see what they're blabbing about. And it was beating a dead horse. They don't know when to stop. And people yeah. are sick of it. People right. are keep, sick keep, of it. Keep scrolling, keep scrolling. Yeah. And we'll, yeah. we'll comment on the other stories we okay. have here. Yeah, because we got another uh, this, 12 this one, This one coming up is very, very important. It appears that uh, R.M. McMaster, who replaced Michael Flynn, who, by the way, was fired by Obama at the recommendation of John Brennan, then the director of the CIA, because Mike Flynn opposed, opposed the creation of ISIS, which took place in 2012. Judicial Watch was able to obtain the documents from the Defense Intelligence Agency that Flynn headed at the time of creating ISIS under the influence of John Brennan, uh, 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 Hillary Clinton, and Barack Obama. If you continue to roll the slides, Louisa, okay, you'll find yeah, that McMaster good. has been in contact with George Soros. He's giving McMaster updates about what's going on in the administration, where Soros is a major figure wanting to, uh, you know, uh, delegitimize the Trump administration. McMaster purged De Derek Harvey, one of NSC's best people on the Middle East, mm -hmm. for trying to fire Obama ha ha hangovers. And now he's continuing to purge patriots from the uh, NSC. If you continue to scroll, yeah. this is a really horrendous story. Rich Higgins, who was a top official of the NSC, was fired last month after arguing in a member that President Trump is under sustained attack from subversive forces both within and without the government. Right. Which McMaster knew he was talking about him, McMaster himself.
So he went about banning him. And it, now it looks as though he's, he's trying to squeeze out Steve Bannon as well. I right. watched him during an interview on the Sunday talk shows when he was pressed as to whether he could get along with Bannon. He wouldn't answer the question. It's obvious to me. He yeah. wants to get him out. Right. Um, it, it's amazing that I don't think the, the viewers, or some do, I mean, our, our viewers are pretty astute and savvy, but <clears throat> I'm always thinking of the new viewer who is just coming to Goldfish Report, uh, POTUS right. Reports, and who is jumping into this conversation and, and you know, how, you know, it, I don't know, shameful is it? How shameful is it? How embarrassing is it that we have this force within our own government trying to, to, um, to really, uh, it's a coup de, I mean, they're trying to do a coup d'etat against uh, our Louisa, own Louisa, the, the weakness... President. The weakness of Donald Trump as president is he didn't really represent a party. He actually executed a hostile takeover of the GAOP. Right. He, he, he defeated 16 other candidates. He had to win a three-pronged war to become president against Hillary Clinton, the Democrats, and the corrupt Clinton machine, against the Republicans and the corrupt Bush machines and their elite, and against the mainstream media. The, the parties yeah, have, a, have a standby government. They have people for all the slots when they come in, pre-designated. Trump didn't have that. So they're, bla right. they're, they're blackballing him. They're holding up all the normal appointments to weaken right. him so that Obama holdovers and Hillary loyalists can yes. undermine. What's yes. significant here, and this is, uh, you right. know, very often InfoWars gets a, an important story, mm. is that Roger Stone came on to uh, explain that Soros insiders have infiltrated the administration. Mm -hmm. And as you see in the next story, we're even getting warnings that there's an effort here to assassinate Trump, which is totally unsurprising. In fact, there have been several efforts in the past that have been thwarted. But the fact is, right. if they can't defeat him politically, right. they'll undertake to take him out physically by the most expedient method. Fortunately, Donald Trump has excellent security yeah. Uh, many n former New York uh, police officers work for Trump. They have some of the best intelligence in the world. Yeah. Yeah. No, those NYPD police are amazing. And the firefighters are so amazing. I have nothing but respect for them. Um, so absolutely. And, and that's, that's disgraceful. And that's the magnitude of opposition that he's fighting and facing every day when he goes to work. And it's, I don't know how he gets up and does it, but I mean, he's got this incredible, incredible attitude. This one thing Donald Trump well, has is, well, is this really well, optimistic well, attitude that makes him feel like he can do anything Look at this part of the story. Yeah. In addition to Brennan's statements talking about, you know, he, he's promoting a coup. He's openly promoting a coup. This is treason. John Brennan, former head of the CIA. In addition to Brennan's statement, CNN counterterrorism expert and former deputy director to former FBI director Mueller at the FBI, Phil Mudd, warned during an interview this week with Jake Tapper that the U.S. government is going to kill this guy. Let me give you one bottom line as a former government official. Government is going to kill this guy, Mudd said. He defends Vladimir Putin. There are many State Department and CIA officers coming home, and at Langley and Foggy Bottom, CIA and State, they're saying, this is how you defend us, he continued. But the fact is, Donald's acting in the best interests of the United States. A better relation with Russia are desirable. Yeah. Russia didn't engage in any hacking. Russia has only sought to defend itself. Russia right. came to the defense of Assad in Syria, right. which was a good thing. We had no legitimate right to be in Syria. Right. We were there in violation of international law. Russia is right. there in accordance right. with international law. Right. And, so and the fact high, that... They're using us as a proxy uh, army to fight their battle uh, over the Golan Heights with Israel, but no one, nobody wants to talk about that. That's right. We're, we're only in the Middle East to benefit Israel. It's done no benefit to the United States. 9-11 was contrived in order to draw the United States into endless wars in the Middle East to take out the modern Arab states that served as a counterbalance to Israel's uh, 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 domination of the region. Right. right. Well, in our last five, six minutes here, I'm going to um, – do, do you want to just pick out uh, – one or two more because I know you have more here but we're not going to get to all of it yeah 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 no we're actually we're actually in a suitable place Louisa okay. this is merely further reporting about the NSA experts former okay. NSA experts who repeated 
you right. can roll a little bit more. Here's okay. a ridiculous article in the New York Magazine attempting to debunk. But if you go forward, you'll find what they found is non-debunkable. Go to the next story. I mean, uh, the, Russia here, hack. the Intel vets <laughs> challenge Russia hack evidence. Mm. Forensic studies of Russian hacking into DNC computers last year revealed that on July 5th, 2016, data was leaked, not hacked by a person with physical access to DNC computers and then doctored to incriminate Russia. Right. After examining metadata from the Guccifer 2.0, yeah. July 5th, 2016 intrusion into the DNC server, independent cyber investigators have concluded that an insider copied DNC data onto an external storage device and that telltale signs implicating Russia were then inserted. Key among their findings, is a conclusion that the data was copied onto a storage device at a speed that far exceeds an internet capability for a remote hack. Of equal importance, yeah. the forensic show the copying and doctoring were performed on the East Coast of the US. Thus far, mainstream media have ignored the findings of these independent studies. This is very of important they did. stuff. Of course they did. It's just, you know, it's, but it's also a distraction. It's, it's just out there to distract us though. I mean, of course, it's, we can very easily, you know, um, go through it systematically, scientifically, and say there's, you know, it's so weak, it's not even a, st a house of cards, it's not even standing like a house of cards, it's got no... There may be one or two more stories here to tie it up, because, yeah. okay. you know, this, Let's is, move along. Break this is perfectly appropriate. Oh, yeah, it is okay. fascinating that Hillary's under. email investigation is being reopened. Okay, and, and, I saw you, that. Yeah, that's a positive development. And go again. Let's see what we have here. Yep. George Order, State Department, yes. to search Hillary right. Clinton's former closest advisor's emails over Benghazi. Right. This means there's still hope that we might get some justice regarding her abuse of her role as Secretary of State to benefit the Clinton Foundation. Right. And there may, may or may not be one more story that we can okay. use to conclude. This is a report that may or may not be true, but Hillary <laughs> uh, boarded a plane to fly to Canada one day after a federal judge ordered the reopening yes. of the email investigation. Don't we'll have to see if this right. pans out. Right. Nothing would surprise me here. Yeah. Uh, th th these are scurrilous individuals who have, have de uh, you know, right. defrauded the American public. No, you, yeah. you, you were good. Oh, yeah, yeah, we're good right where we are. Yeah, because we're going to have to we're going to have to wrap this up. These were the most important issues that we had to talk about this week. Um, the president is still, you know, um, traveling. He's in New York City today and um, should be back to Bedminster. He had to go to Washington D.C. for a meeting, and um, just his regular uh, his regular uh, agenda um, items. Uh, let's see, travels to D.C., meets with Chief of Staff of General John Kelly, uh, signs memorandum addressing China's laws, policies, and practices and actions related to intellectual property, innovation, and technology, so that's good for trade, business, and trade. Uh, meeting with the National Economic Council, travels to New York City, and then he has a phone call with Prime Minister Shinzo Abe today. Um, so that's basically his, uh, his, uh, his agenda for today, and we'll see what happens the rest of this week. Jim, thank you so much for joining me today on POTUS Report. This was fantastic. Seems like we always need a little bit more time, but we don't have it. <laughs> My <laughs> it great pleasure, Louisa. My thank great you. pleasure. Thank you so much. Uh, this was wonderful. I just, we could go on for quite a while, and, you know, we'll see what happens. I don't think um you know what was uh, what was so horrible that north korea was doing they were testing missiles so let's go invade them right There's all they want is respect aretha had it right r-e-s-p-e-c-t absolutely which the united states should display and all this would return to right. a state of semi-normality but, but it's by the people we for the people by the people if the people are not going to participate forget about it we've we've lost it this is why we're at least trying to bring you this information bring critical analysis of it um think critically about what you're seeing don't just believe things blindly because there is a propaganda war there is censorship there is really a fascist um movement going on and you you can't not see it. If you're listening to our reports, there's no way you can avoid this. So folks, um, stay tuned to our POTUS updates. We're going to just bring you the truth as we see it in our view. Uh, we're going to give you our analysis of the data and speculation and hypothesis and, of course, evidence of that as well. Um, but Jim, thank you very, very much. I hope you have a good week. Let's see what's going to happen this week. Should be interesting. My pleasure. You too. And we Lisa. will talk about it next week on our next week's POTUS update. So 
So folks, if you want to learn more about Jim, I will put his uh, uh, contact info in the description section of this video. And I want to also just thank all of our viewers for viewing for your uh, links. Bernie, thank you for your stories. And everybody else, I just remembered Bernie off the top of my head, a lot of people trying to contribute. They feel like they want to be part of this. They don't know how, and they're contributing by emails and stories, contributions, whatever you have. And we're going to have, and just so everybody can, can see, we're going to have our, these are, these are, these are our Goldfish Report t-shirts, and one's on the way to you, Jim. Thanks, <laughs> thanks. thanks. Oh, okay. Terrific. So, th folks, thanks so much for viewing, and this concludes this edition of the Goldfish Report. Speculation, and I'll grant it appears to be highly speculative. Right. Uh, uh, that's the starting point for scientific inquiry. It all begins in speculation. So if you don't allow speculation, you cut off critical thinking from the beginning because the key element is getting alternative hypotheses out there to kick around to investigate, to sort out the evidence to determine which are true and which are false. Okay, that's what we're trying to do here on POTUS Report is to look at the data, look at the evidence and sort through and what does it mean. And sometimes, you know, it doesn't mean that this is what we believe personally. It just means that we're looking at the data and according to the way we're uh, educated and trained in our experiences, this is, this is what the possible interpretation is. Is that what you're saying, Jim? Yes, yes, yes. And there are... Uh, it, 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 when you take an event like this that is uh, politically significant, you want to look at the context, look at the location, look at the locale, look at the players. Uh, this is uh, Charlottesville, Virginia. I actually taught at the University of Virginia twice as a visiting associate professor in 77, 78, as a visiting full professor in 1985. Uh, I know the community. Uh, it, it's... Uh, it has changed somewhat in its complexion to become very supportive of uh, liberal Democrats. Uh, after all, Hillary's uh, uh, vice presidential candidate came from Virginia. Her one-time uh, campaign manager, Terry McAuliffe, came from Virginia. He's been tied into a whole lot of corruption. Get this. Now, here's other data uh, about those who were involved there. Mayor. Mike Seiner came to Charlottesville around 2005. He comes from a New York family. He's a longtime Democratic Party activist and voting rights lawyer. He's a protege of Virginia Senator Mark Warner, who is from California and, and the Democratic uh, governor. Uh, the vice mayor, Wes Bellamy, came to Charlottesville from Atlanta in 2009. He's a full-time professional black activist and agitator. Mm -hmm. uh, 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 Kristen Zekos came from Hungary to Charlottesville in 1994. She's a community organizer and agitator and member of the board of directors for local NAACP. Mm -hmm. She was the proponent of the monument removal measure. Bob Fenwick is from St. Louis, Missouri, came to Charlottesville in 1976, where he married a local UVA uh, law grad. Mm -hmm. In uh, comparison to his colleagues on the council, he's a Charlottesville old-timer. But the point is, there are a yeah. lot of people there mm -hmm. who would be very supportive of an action that would be cast a very unfavorable light on the Trump administration because they're uh, uh, longtime supporters of Hillary Clinton, George Soros, the globalist agenda that actually would ultimately deprive us as our rights as citizens, part of which, of course, is the gun control effort that was uh, you know, given a, such a, a major boost by the events of Sandy Hook, hmm. even though they were completely contrived, even though right. we have proof it was a FEMA drill, including even the manual, where Barack right. Obama, right. <laughs> Louisa, Made a laid statement. the foundation for all of these events yes. by nullifying the Smith-Mutt Act of 1948, which precluded the use of the same techniques of disinformation and propaganda within the United States as were being used without in the NDAA, the National Defense Appropriation Act of 2013 signed in time for Sandy Hook, the Boston bombing, San Bernardino, and a host of these others, including even this event. To well, the extent, wait. I'm sorry, Jim. I'm sorry. I don't mean to interrupt you. Go ahead. Finish that thought. No, that's <laughs> okay. I no, mean, they, they, they have made that. it legal. They have made yes. it legal yes. Yes. to perform these phony, fraudulent events without yes. fear of uh, criminal indictment. Yes. Uh, under, this is a Barack Obama thing. 
Yeah, but didn't yeah. the Patriot Act open the door for this? Wasn't this in the Patriot Act where they were allowed to use propaganda? It was, I, I thought that was in the Patriot Act, or maybe it was another subsequent. Oh, I don't Congress. believe it actually was. Uh, okay. The Smith Mont was okay. actually nullified until 2012 when Obama okay. signed the NDAA for 2013. But the Patriot Act laid the groundwork for so many uh, acts of malfeasance, you know, right, and right. it's tragic uh, because. No one in the Senate, to my knowledge, even read the Patriot Act. It was it was brought off the shelf. It had been prepared in a bank and then rushed through. In fact, when an attempt was was made to conduct hearings uh, by prominent members of the Judiciary Committee, for example, they were sent anthrax. This is when those anthrax occurs took place right. Right. to ensure that there would be no hearing. Before we move on, so in speculation, since that's what we're doing, we're speculating, what, I mean, it, it, what's the probability then? Is there a probability that, that this, that Alex Jones could be correct in that there was some agenda to create martial law? Because I have to tell you, with all these other false flags, they did not get martial law. They might have done it in the, like, Boston, like, I think they went under martial law for, like, a short period of time, but it didn't remain. So it doesn't seem to, I, I think these are, they're like firecrackers that fuzz out. They mm -hmm. just don't. Hi, everyone. Welcome to the Goldfish Report. I'm your host, Louisa, and this is our weekly Drain the Swamp POTUS update. And we have joining us again this week, lucky for us, Jim Fetzer. Jim, welcome to Goldfish Report again, and thanks so much for being here on POTUS. Oh, Louisa, I'm delighted to join you again. I think you're doing a terrific job. These are vital issues for the public to understand. So it's wonderful you're devoting yourself to explaining what's going on. Well, thank you for joining me because I think what you know we're trying to do is understand why these things are also happening, so we can put them into a context of um, of cognition and psychology and behavior, and why are people doing what they're doing. But let's let's get into this. We only have an hour, so what the heck is going on in Charlottesville? Let's screen share what some of these stories are that we're going to be looking at, and what is going on here. And I knew that you were the perfect person. I thought of you when I saw this, because unfortunately, this just has false flag written all over it. Well, it does. It does. It does. And look, notice how they, they cast it as a lose-lose for Donald Trump, mm. because uh, if he, you know, condemns the, the so-called uh, white nationalists, then presumably he's attacking some strong supporters of his America First program. And if he doesn't, they can pillory him for condoning it. I thought he was very artful, actually, in condemning both sides here, which was Absolutely. actually exactly the right stance to take, but because they had a preconceived plan here for how they were going to spin this to demonize Trump, right. they have attacked him for not being more forceful in following what they believed would be his initial reaction. Well, let's let's um, take a look at how this whole event came to be. This just seemed like it popped up out of nowhere, Jim. Did it pop up out of nowhere? What, what, uh, what do we... Pre pretty what much. And let me just say something, too. Yeah. We had a, a very odd uh, automobile attack in mm -hmm. New York City uh, oh, six months or so ago. Mm -hmm. And I had the benefit of a brilliant guy who's uh, been a police officer for 25 years, a general detective, 15 of those who did a slow motion study of that event. And it turned out to be choreographed. They had stunt actors who got up after being run over. Turns out the vehicle was actually there at the corner under a tarp from the night before. So it seems to me we have a precursor here of what's going on in Charlottesville. Though it may very well be that this 32 year old woman is in fact dead and that others are injured, there are reasons to believe that even the crash itself had some uh, choreographed aspects. Well, it looked like a stunt car from the movies, except it, you know, and, and it, it, the way it moved in and moved back so easily and effortlessly, and the windows were all blackened, and it just seemed like a stunt car to me. I, I don't well, know. the way back, that was really remarkable. When I watched yeah. the video, I couldn't believe it. I mean, just straight <laughs> back. I mean, that's not easy to do. <laughs> and if you're, you know, uh, the least bit disturbed, it's it's going to be very difficult to pull off. That suggests exactly. maybe the guy who was arrested wasn't the guy driving the car. This is so, this just, you know, 
smells really bad. Let's take a look at why it also smells bad because we also have this, um, we have this ad here. You want to explain what this is, where you found this? Sure, sure. Well, it, it, it turned up online at a Craigslist ad for actors and photographers in Charlottesville. I mean, here you have one of these crisis actor firms, Crowds on Demand, mm -hmm. a PR outfit based in L.A., and they were looking for enthusiastic actors and photographers in the Charlotte, North Carolina a area. Now, that's, uh, that's actually in Charlotte as opposed to Charlottesville. Right, but that's so on purpose, though, right? I mean, it's so, yeah. It may very well be, right. yeah. The, the trouble is, this is going on all the time. For example, in relation to San Bernardino, mm -hmm. we discovered a Craigslist ad for actors at San Bernardino. The, they were going to be have good pay, transportation, food, some speaking roles. The call date was December 1st, going live on the 2nd, which is why there were so many wandering around aimlessly not knowing what they were doing, because literally they didn't know what they were doing. I found a highly qualified EMT, I mean, a guy with extraordinary qualifications. When we went through the, the medical activities on, at both Sandy Hook on the 14th of December, and in San Bernardino, and he, he made one point after another how they weren't following standard protocols, that this was all clearly faked and staged. I had it online, the real deal, staging attacks from Sandy Hook to San Bernardino, but the last time I checked, it's one that YouTube had taken down. Mm -hmm. There's just too much truth out there, and they're doing everything they can to ensure that the public does not become aware of what's going on. But Jim, people know. I mean, there's got to be millions of people who know about false flags, and a lot of it's thanks to you and your work. I mean, but a lot of people are waking up. Why is this that they, the problem is, we were talking about this before we started recording, is why people look at this ad and you see one thing. And it's a peaceable assembly. Okay, now, let's let me just get to that. You keep talking. I'm going to try and pull that up. I'm going to pull that one up. Well, yeah, we, we could just scroll through the sequence because the next one is interesting, okay. too. That's suggesting that this Spencer isn't bona fide, that he actually was a plant okay. and thereby, you know, an, a, a, implicitly an agent, a covert agent provocateur. Yeah. Yeah, there it is. Texas. He's from elite prep school in Dallas. He went to Duke. His cry of hail Trump, you see, is a deliberate effort to demonize Trump by drawing parallels to Hitler. And here you have him in a friendly photo with Laura Bush. I mean, give us a break. But, but Jen, there's got to be an agenda behind this. People aren't suddenly – that the problem is that this is social engineering. That's oh, the agree, bottom completely. line. Absolutely. And to fulfill an agenda that's going to impose more restrictions on our liberties, on our rights, which I don't really think we, we have anyway because we're all dead, according to our birth certificates, we're vessels or we're deceased. But that's another conversation. Um, so, uh, yes, there's, there's the censorship. And this is... Well, well, the fact is, the fact is, Louisa, this seems to be an extension of the efforts that the Trump campaign, especially in collusion with George Soros, was undertaking against Donald Trump as a, as a candidate. Right. They were infiltrating his rallies, attempting sabotage. We had the Project Veritas videos as revelations. So what we have here is a massive double standard, but that's all because it's deliberately contrived to undermine the, the uh, authority of Donald Trump as a democratically elected president of the United States. Absolutely, absolutely. And, you know, it, it's uh, not a coincidence that this seemed to be, like, uh, you know, regard, um, relative to university over there. And, you know, what happened, They when um, M Milo, uh, I can't pronounce his last name because I really don't have it at the top of my head, but was giving a, a speech over at um, – at, uh, what was it, uh, Columbia? Oh, no, Berkeley, UC Berkeley. And then that big riot, um, that big riot came, and um, they had these men in black, like these people in black, uh, the groups, and they were like black groups, they called them, and they were provocateurs who went in and incited the violence. So people who were there were absolutely stunned and amazed that this was happening because they don't realize they are being, they are being, 
um, led in, they're, you know, like sheep in a slaughterhouse. I mean, they don't know yeah. what they're really participating in. And if yeah. they, if they watched what happened in, in, um, uh, with Osheti Sukohen, if they, they did not see that video from November 20th with the water cannons and below freezing temperatures, did they not see those, you know, reports about the, uh, the uh, rubber bullets being shot at peaceful, prayerful protesters? Of course, if you're going to, I just want the viewers to know, and anybody who sees this, if you're planning on participating in any of these things, you, you know, this is your wake-up call, right, Jim? Yes, 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 yes. Scroll down a few more, and we've, we've got other stories related here that are important for us to discuss further. Yeah, oh yeah I keep going. Here we go. Here, 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 we'll here that the police were ordered to stand down, yet that earlier report, which did come from the Daily Stormer, had them actually attacking the participants in the rally. Uh, so, you know. Which one it, is it? <laughs> Right. But the point is, either way, it's right. wrongful conduct on the part of the police right. and indicates that this was a setup. This is a story worth uh, reviewing. Charlottesville, the events that unflo unfolded uh, this Saturday were tragic, hateful, mm. insidious, and even deadly. Saturday will go down in history as the day America's hate reared its ugly face and proved to the world that this country is being divided to be conquered. Adding fuel to the fire of hatred and violence were politicians who told police not to intervene and allowed the unchecked carnage to unfold before their eyes. The stand-down order was confirmed by the ACLU, who quoted a police say source saying, will not intervene until given a command to do so, a command that never came. Right. You know, I thought when I saw some of the initial images, I didn't see police. Yeah, they should have been distributed in the crowd for crowd control. Exactly. I mean, that, that didn't happen in Dallas, for example, with JFK. The 110th Military Intelligence Unit was ordered to stand down over the adamant opposition of its commanding officer, which should have been distributed throughout the city to keep the crowd uh, out of the street. In fact, they spilled out 8, 10, 12. We have one photograph of a bus on Main Street in the you could have had, uh, right beside the presidential limousine where an assassin with a handgun could have taken uh -huh. out the president of the United States. Right. This was all part of the setting him up. This, we right. have more than 15 indications of Secret Service setting him up. Now here's Alex Jones speculating that the, the riots were staged to bring in martial law and ban conservative rallies. And while, uh, uh, you know, there are going to be efforts to suppress this, we're going to go forward with all everything that's going on now using Google and other search engines right. to take down stories. The reason it's important, even if this is merely a... And the people who respond to it see something very different. And there's just a lack of critical thinking and a lack of awareness, like you were saying, because you see this and you just say, something's going to happen. Something's going on. Someone looks at this and says, oh, a chance to make money, free food, free gas, you know, what the heck. They have no idea what the consequences of their actions are going to be. They have no idea what they're getting into. Do you think that they sign, do, do you think that they sign non-disclosure agreements? What do you think? Oh, oh, I expect they do. Do you know that those who were involved in the demolition of Sandy Hook Elementary School had to sign lifetime gag orders? that they couldn't discuss what they saw or did not see, which <laughs> would have included on. no blood on the floor, no pock marks in the walls from bullets that were never fired. But Jim, we don't do this in crime scenes normally. You never propose gag orders on- Lifetime real. gag orders. <laughs> on real crime scenes. And, and the, 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 <laughs> the clerk of Newtown entered into secret oh, agreements man. with the legislature before the event that she not be required to issue death certificates on children because she knew that issuing a false de death certificate is a crime. She didn't want to commit a crime. Right. So she arranged with them that she not be obligated to issue them in anticipation of the Sandy Hook event. Well, where, so, but, but certainly if there's deceased people involved, there's going to be death certificates you would expect. But well, didn't, they, didn't they, didn't Louisa, they went out of their way to ensure they not be available to the public. Oh, they, it's not available to the public. I right, see. right. And, and the, the one we obtained was from Kelly Watt, who's a very smart gal, 
who had over 100 hours of conversation with Lenny Posner, who was the purported father of oh, Noah, right. the most prominent of the Sandy Hook kids, because Noah not only died in Newtown on 14 December of 2012, but died again on 16 December 2014 in, in Pakistan. Uh, and when Kelly told him that she didn't believe he had a kid, didn't believe he died and all that, he, I think, inadvisedly sent her a, a death certificate for Noah. And it turned out a fabrication with the bottom half of a real death certificate, the top half of a fake. Didn't have a file number, had the wrong estimated time of death as 11 a.m. when the shooting took place, purportedly between 9.30 and 9.35. Needless to add, if his son had actually died at Sandy Hook, he would have had a real death certificate, not a fake one. This is treason, isn't it? This is treason. You don't have these things. The, these people who are in the know, who know how these things normally operate, like Wolfgang Halbert also, you know, knows that there were certain protocols that were established for this person, for this purpose that were not followed, like you have pointed out as well. And you've also pointed out that there was a stand down order now. Is that was that? Yeah, we'll, get, we'll get, we'll that. get to that. What's okay. interesting here is that yes. this fellow, Richard Spencer, who seems to have been involved in organizing the rally may very well be a plant. We'll get to that. The Daily Stormer was involved in the planning of the event as a protest to taking down a statue of Robert E. Lee, who, of course, was not only a great general, but in my opinion, a great American. I mean, he was standing up for what he believed. This business of taking down all of these monuments to major participants in the Civil War is, to me, a form of desecration. They, they stood up for what they believed. They've done the same thing in New Orleans, taking down a dozen or more monuments. I think it's political correctness gone amok. I mean, there's no reason to do this. It's a, it's a needless provocation. And that appears to be the point. They're taking them down in order to provoke a response right. to which they can then respond as they prefer to twist the situation to their political benefit. Well, do you think there's any truth to the report that they were trying to impose martial law? That this was a... a no, like no, a, let, us, let us get to that, because that's okay. interesting. That's been, that's been censored. I want to talk about why that, it's important that, that speculations of that order not be censored. If okay. you go down to the next slide, you'll okay. see here, this is a summation. Yeah. Uh, about what happened, that after a challenge by the ACLU, a federal judge ruled uh, to, to take the permit for Lee Park uh, uh, was a civil rights violation, so it was restored. They arrived, there were about four to 5,000 people gathered. The event was scheduled to begin at noon. But around 11.30, cops began attacking the crowd and shooting tear gas. Uh, they began bullhorning. It was an illegal assembly, when clearly it was not. People were forced out of the park. Those who tried to say were attacked. There were, there, there were a few from this uh, uh, organization, but the cops, cops herded people in their direction so people would be attacked and pepper sprayed. They, they were, uh, people were attempting to reorganize in various locations. They were visited by cops. People were being split up and someone crashed a car. This, this is uh, in, indicative of uh, uh, another story we have here of this, the police uh, having been ordered to stand down for maintaining an uh, organ. Give them the bang, I think, ultimately, mm -hmm. that they're looking for. I don't think they're really creating um, a nuisance, yes, but I don't think... Well, well bear in mind, bear in mind Louisa, Alex has been out this a long time. And right. while he certainly has his shortcomings, for example... He, he minimizes uh, the role of Israel in a whole lot of nefarious activities, including 9-11. Nevertheless, yes. he has brought a great deal of awareness of false flag attacks to the American people. And he's looking at this within a, a broad pattern of events, uh, uh, which could very reasonably be interpreted as attempts to lay a groundwork or to promote the imposition of martial law. Uh, so I can't dismiss what he's saying here uh, it, casually. It, it has to be taken seriously, but not to the point of acceptance. This is the, the stage of speculation, and scientific inquiries are four stages. Yes. Speculation, 
uh, uh, investigation, elaborating the evidence, adaptation of the hypotheses to the evidence as we see which have the higher likelihood, which are better supported by the evidence, and fourth, uh, ex explanation. When the evidence tends to settle down and point in the same direction, you're entitled to accept the best supported hypotheses, uh, hypothesis among the alternatives as true, but in the tentative and fallible fashion of science, meaning even though it's best supported, it could still turn out to be false. And where as more evidence comes in, you may have to adjust your reasoning reject hypotheses you previously accepted, accept hypotheses you previously rejected, and leave others in suspense. Right. So that's the process we're going through here. Okay. And, and you know, here he's just talking about a, a, an early stage, but for which I think many would argue that there is some evidence to support. Okay, especially banning conservative, um, you know, gatherings, and they're banning conservative reporting on Facebook. I mean, on Google, probably Facebook, but on Google, on YouTube, and that's really going to bring us into the next story because this is all part of really a crackdown to really get a much more, um, you know, uh, greater control over the content, over the information flow of. Information. That's absolutely right. Now. Most of the audience may ha have never heard William Casey's remarks to the staff at, at, at the CIA when Reagan appointed him its director after having managed his campaign and negotiated with the Iranians to not release the hostages so that Jimmy Carter wouldn't be able to win the election where Casey told the assembled staff that our disinformation campaign will be a success when everything the American people believe is false. The fact is the internet has undermined that by creating an alternative media that today has more credibility than the mainstream, and therefore uh, the powers that be are responding by trying to find ways to rein in the alternative media where right. Google, Mozilla, Facebook, Amazon.com are all participating in a massive effort to suppress information they don't want to be heard or watched by the American people. Did you see that report, that Drudge, the Drudge report actually superseded um, the uh, ratings of CNN and the other mainstream it, media? It, it's in our story set, Louise. It's uh, in our story that's where set. We saw it. <laughs> of course, we saw it. Isn't here. that fascinating? This is, this, Isn't this is that where fascinating? We're be talking about this. So, very good. And of course, Mozilla, and I'll tell you, Mozilla always crashes on me. I'm so frustrated with, with fire. I think it's a. Uh, Funny. They're always in yeah, we're talking about Firefox. I think yeah. it's the least desirable of the browsers. I find Chrome and Safari, I use all three to be more reliable than Firefox. Oh, yeah, unfortunately. But Firefox, I think, was a little bit better with keeping... Um you know, in terms of the, you know, tracking your history and things like that. And not like DuckDuckGo, though. That's another one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, Louisa, think about this. That may be because, as I see it, actually, Firefox looks to me like a military intel op. So they want to track your history. So keeping yeah. an accurate history of you is yeah. just the compiling part of their database that's, that's particularized, individualized to each of its users. Well, I just do research on policy, so that's all they're going to see on me. I, you know, nothing to hide. Well, if you back up just a hair, we'll oh, see okay. part of the story about how, right. what's going on with Mozilla. Yeah. yeah. Information just, a, just a tad further. Okay. Sorry about yeah. that. Yeah. So it's investing in people, programs, and projects in a new initiative to disrupt misinformation online, calling for a Mozilla Information Trust Initiative. But how, how are they a position to arbitrate between the true and the false? Absolutely. What is uh, misinformation? The, What's the right, criteria? Right. The and whole creation of the fact checkers like Snopes.org yeah. is, is to create a second